Today we're going to take a look at write attributes tasks. As you can see, I have a new task modal open here for creating a write attributes task. But what these do is they allow you to really write any arbitrary values that you would like to the JSON map of the resource that you happen to be working with. And we're going to demonstrate how we can use those with instances to gain some useful functionality within Morpheus. And by means of demonstrating that, we're also going to see some additional things, including the power of provisioning workflows that Morpheus offers. These allow you to easily and automatically manage the lifecycle of an instance. We're going to take a look at chaining task results within a provisioning workflow. And we're also going to take a look at X as a service or anything as a service instances, which allow you to manage anything that you would like as an instance in Morpheus outside of the typical VM or container backed instance types that are more familiar. So to set up the demo, we're going to use Morpheus X as or anything as a service instances to represent folders in a Dropbox account, just as a simple example. We can use X as instances to represent anything. So we're going to, uh, in this case, use that to represent folders in a Dropbox account. And Morpheus is going to manage the whole process of talking to the Dropbox API in order to create and delete those folders as the instance goes through that life cycle. And we'll see that played out in the demonstration here. So the first thing that I need in order to set up my uh, X as instance type and to uh, set up all the automation I need is three specific tasks. One of those is gonna be a write attribute task. And for the other two, I chose the Python task type, although a number of other task types could be used there depending on your scripting language of choice. So, what I need my three tasks to do, I need one to create the folder, actually talk to the Dropbox API and create the folder. I need one to write attributes to the new instance map when the uh, XAS instance for the folder is created. And then I need one to delete the Dropbox folder at teardown time. So let's take a look at how I've set those up. So if we take a look at this task, I'm gonna edit it here. This is a Python script. As I mentioned previously, a number of different scripting languages and task types related to those scripting languages could be used for this part. Um, but really all I'm doing is I am uh, importing the necessary modules. I am instantiating some variables that I'm gonna need. Um, this being uh, the username for the currently logged in user. And this being a sequence number. Um, that I need to be unique. So in this case, I've uh, I'm chosen to set it as the uh, ID of the instance that's ultimately going to get created. And as you can see down here, I'm using that to build uh, dynamically build a unique folder name for the folder on the back end in Dropbox. I'm also instantiating the uh, token for my Dropbox developer account. Um, the way that I'm onboarding that is through a command line argument. There are other ways that you could do that, but that's the way that I, I did that here. So I'm giving my command line argument here, which is a call to Morpheus Cypher to read in that token. And then I can, uh, using the Python's inbuilt sys module, which is part of the Python standard library, I can onboard that into my code here. From there, it's pretty simple. I'm really just instantiating that Dropbox object, and then I'm making the appropriate call to create the folder. And at the end, I am printing the folder's name to the, the output. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I wanna be able to chain the results from this particular task into the next task that I'm gonna show. So by uh, setting, uh, by adding this as my output, I can onboard the results of this task which in this case is just the folder name, into my next task, which is what I'll show next. So that's the task that's gonna create the folder for us. But then what I also wanna do is I wanna write attributes. And this is really the crux of the video is how you can use these write attributes tasks to do certain things within Morpheus. So the write attributes task, uh, really all, all you can, put any valid JSON here. So in this case, I just have a very simple key and value pair in my JSON map. Uh, folder name is the key. And then for the value, it's actually gonna be the results of the previous task. So you can see here, I have 
results.create folder. And this create folder is referring to the code value of my prior task. So let's take a look at that real quick since I didn't point it out when we had it open a moment ago. So if we jump into here, the code is uh, what I'm referencing there. So when I say results.code, that's how I can call in the results of any prior run task into a future task, which is what I'm doing here. And it's also helpful when you're going to be accessing those results in a different task to let Morpheus know what type of result to expect. In this case, it's just a single value. It's gonna be the name of that folder. Uh, but there are other, uh, you know, we can let Morpheus know that to expect a result of a key value pair. Uh, we can let Morpheus know to expect the result of a JSON map. In this case, it's going to be a single value, but but depending, but uh, um, indicating this correctly ensures that Morpheus will be able to process the output and onboard it successfully into the next task. There's a whole section in Morpheus Docs, which I can show real quick here, that goes over task results. So if you want to see some additional examples, those are um, contained in Morpheus documentation under the task results section. But back in Morpheus, let's go back to our, our um, write attributes task. And I'm back in here. And again, it's just as simple as putting a valid JSON map in here. And in our case, all that I want to store to that, um, to that attributes um, section within the instance map is the results of that prior that prior task, which I'm doing here by calling results.code for the relevant task. And then finally, we need our um, provisioning workflow to be able to delete the folder at instance delete time or teardown time. So we can take another quick look at this. Um, some similar things done here, importing the modules that I need for the Python script. I'm also onboarding that token just like I did before. And then I'm instantiating the folder name by referring to the attributes map of the eventual instance that's gonna get created. And when we provision a test instance, I'll show you what that looks like on the instance JSON map. But for now, you can just see how I'm onboarding that into my Python script by going into the instance body, the attributes, and then I can call the key for the specific item that I want. I could just do instance and attributes and I could get the full JSON map if I wanted. In this case, we just have one key and value pair in there. So I'm just gonna get the exact value that I need. And then as I'll show you in a minute when we provision a test instance, there's also an additional new line character added to the value here. So I'm calling Python's inbuilt strip function to um, to remove that from the end um, or otherwise my script won't work properly and then just like with before I'm just making the appropriate call to the Dropbox API in order to locate the specific folder that I'm identifying with that particular instance and then deleting it so that's really all that there is to see there but once we have the tasks created they need to go into uh, what's known as a provisioning workflow so let's go back to the automation section and then workflows. And there's two different types. I can go over those real quick. A provisioning workflow allows you to tie individual tasks to specific phases within the instance lifecycle. And this is really powerful because at any particular moment in the instance lifecycle, you can have certain things happen automatically. So when the instance is created, you can have particular automation scripts run. When the instance is deleted, you can have teardown tasks done. And at other phases in between, such as when services are stopped and started or when the instance is reconfigured, we can have other automations take place at that time. So provisioning workflows are very powerful and that's what we're gonna be using here today. Operational workflows are simply just uh, a list of tasks in some logical order and operational workflows can be run on a one-off basis or they can be scheduled kind of like a cron job um, and those can be run periodically as needed but we're going to take a look at the provisioning workflows because what we want to do in this case is build out an instance type and have some automations take place on their own at specific times when it's appropriate in the instance life cycle so i've already created the provisioning workflow i'm going to use let's take a look at what i did 
So within the provision phase, um, so this is going to happen, you know, as the instance is provisioned, what I want to happen is I want that create folder task to get run because that's going to actually create the folder on the Dropbox backend. And then I want the right attributes to store that folder name to my instance map so that I can refer to it later. Because we can chain results from one task to another within the same workflow, provisioning workflow phase, but we can't access those results in a different phase. So I'm writing that folder name to the instance map attributes area so that I can refer to it here in the teardown section when my delete task is run. So that should help kind of tie some things together um, with what we saw in how I'd set up my script. I'm onboarding that folder name from the attributes of the instance map itself because I don't have access to the results of these tasks outside of their own phase that they're running in. So these two things are going to happen in sequence at provision time. And then when I delete the instance, this is going to happen. So Morpheus is automating this whole process. When I provision an XAS instance for my new Dropbox folder, I'm going to see it represented in Morpheus in my instances list. And that's all going to be taken care of on the back end with Dropbox automatically through automation. And when I delete the instance, the appropriate delete calls to the Dropbox backend are also going to take place automatically um, on, on the Dropbox end as well. So Morpheus is managing this whole process. I don't have to do anything except click a couple of buttons to provision my instance, click a couple buttons to delete my instance, and Morpheus is going to manage the entire process of handling the Dropbox backend. So let's go ahead and provision a test instance now. I'll click add and I've created this instance uh, type probably should show that real quick so let's take a look at the blueprint section within Morpheus just to show how that's built really quickly before we provision the test instance you can see this is my instance type here and there's really not a whole lot going on this particular instance type was very easy to set up the instance type is essentially just kind of a wrapper that can go around a layout, which I'm going to show you in a moment, but I've simply given it a name. I gave it a custom icon just so it looks nice in my list of available instance types. And that's really about it as far as the instance type. The main thing that is kind of controlling the whole thing behind the scenes is this layout. So let's take a look at the layout. If I click edit, um, layouts can be tied to a number of different technology types. These are, you know, specific cloud types, be it Amazon, be it Azure. In this case, I've chosen workflow as my technology, which really means that automation within my workflow is handling everything. And there's no, I, I don't need to make a specific call to an integration to a public cloud or something along that line. Um, I'm simply saying in this particular instance type, my workflow automation is handling everything. And um, so then I simply identify the workflow. If the user should be giving custom inputs in order to make this instance type work properly, we could have set those up. But in this case, we don't actually need it. Um, Morpheus is going to handle things like naming the folder by generating its own uh, naming convention, which I showed earlier. That's going to be the user's, the, the currently logged in username, as well as a sequential number, a uh, unique sequential number, which in this case I've chosen as just the instance ID once the instance gets created. So that's how the library item is created. And that's why when we go into the instances section and click add, we now see this additional instance type item which we can choose to provision. So I'm going to click next. I'm going to, actually, I'm going to choose a different cloud here. I want that to go to just a Morpheus type cloud. Morpheus type cloud is simply a, a wrapper that can be uh, used around a number of things. In this case, my X is a service instance, and I can give this any name that I want. Um, that's just going to be the name that I, I see this particular instance as in Morpheus in my instances list. Uh, whereas, you know, all the naming of the folder on the back end is handled by my automation. So I'm going to call this my new folder. I'm going to click next. 
And most of this is already pre-configured for the user. We don't have really any custom inputs or anything additional to put in. This workflow I can leave blank here because I've already associated a workflow with the layout at the time that I created the library item, and that's automatically gonna apply. If I wanted to add a separate workflow, I could at provision time, um, but I've already tied the one that I want to the library item, so I don't actually need to do that. So we'll click complete, and this doesn't take very long because really all it's doing is calling the Dropbox API and, and creating a folder, which doesn't take very long. We should see this done here in just a second. And now we go green. So that was successful on the back end. If we want to take a quick look at the history, that's still processing. But while that's processing, let's take a quick look at Dropbox itself. And we can see that this folder was created. I could have showed it earlier to show that this was empty, but you'll just have to take my word for it. This was empty just a moment ago, and this folder has been created. It's automatically been named with the name of the logged in user, which is correct here, a hyphen, and then this is the instance ID. If we go back to Morpheus, this is now green. We can take a look at what has happened here if we want, uh, but we can see uh, you know, pre-provision phase ran correctly, provision phase ran, ran successfully, and then we can see, uh, you know, since I was printing this particular value to the output in my task, we can actually see it uh, listed here in the output, uh, and then the right attributes task was successful as well. So by looking in Dropbox, we know that that instance ID is 85. So let's just take a quick look at the um, at the actual instance map itself. I pull over a postman session here. And if I click enter, I'm just simply, all I'm doing here is calling the Morpheus API to get an instance and I'm specifying the instance by its ID. So this is the instance we've just created. If we roll down here, we can see uh, under instance and then config and then attributes this is what we get by creating the right attributes task. You see that this is the key that I showed you earlier that was set up in my task config, folder name, and then the value was dynamically generated as the logged in user's name and the instance ID, uh, which I chained as you know off the results of the, the task that actually created the folder. And then here's that new line character that I mentioned previously. Um, this is automatically added um, on occasion, depending on the situation, to the attributes uh, task, which um, for my purposes, I, I need to get that out of there so that the folder name matches up and my delete call to the Dropbox API is going to work correctly. So in my case, I use the inbuilt strip method in Python to drop that out. Um, there'd be other ways to do that in other scripting languages. Uh, but in my case, I did have to deal with that so that my delete action works successfully. But let's send Postman away. We'll go back to Morpheus. And so, like I said, we're really managing the whole process of um, the whole life cycle of this particular folder by using provisioning workflows in Morpheus and by using that right attributes task, we now have that value written to the attributes map uh, for the instance itself. So we've stored that and we can use it later. As you saw when I showed the task config earlier, we're using that um, item that is stored on the attributes map in order to call that back during the teardown phase and have the folder deleted successfully. So let's see that in action now. I'm gonna mark that instance and I'm gonna click delete click delete again and now that delete action is taking place this shouldn't take very long take a quick look on the Dropbox side while Morpheus is cleaning some things up and we can see that that folder has actually already been deleted so that delete call was successful and Morpheus is now just doing some additional uh, cleanup and close down in order to actually delete that instance out. So that's really the whole thing. And that's what uh, that shows you what right attributes can do for you. 
Um, as I mentioned previously, we can chain tasks from one, or sorry, chain results from one task to another when we're creating provisioning workflows uh, or operational workflows. But in this case, we're, we're really looking at, at provisioning workflows. Um, so we can chain tasks from one to the other, and we can use write attributes tasks to store any arbitrary value that we would like on the instance JSON map in order to call those back in later phases of the instance lifecycle. Thanks.